Join us in exploring some of the biggest stories in the universe. From deep space imagery, smuggled space sandwiches, to the young sisters who met Barack Obama. Apart from just me, who else wanted to be an astronaut? Let us know in the comments. I definitely look up to my sister. She has a lot of great things that I can learn from, and I think she's an awesome older sister. Ow. <laughs> Thank you, Mimi. Kimberly is my best friend. There, she's never gonna be replaced. I like to do martial arts, and then I also like to do basketball. I like to do archery, and play piano. I have a lot of favorite subjects. I like math and English and social studies and science and technology. I like um, technology the best. These are some of the programs that I did, but I also really like science. I like challenges. We saw some videos of people doing weather balloon launches uh, online. We thought that it would be a really fun family project to do. A weather balloon is basically just a very large balloon. They're used Weather? to see what the weather is going to be. So they be. send up different instruments attached to the bottom of the weather balloons. And they'll transmit the data and say, oh, it's gonna be partly cloudy. There are 16,000 weather balloons launched every day around the world. The weather companies, the forecasters, only recover 30% of them. The other 70% are still floating in space. No, they're not. Well, they're, they're still popped. somewhere. They're somewhere in the Earth. Try not to interrupt me. <laughs> This is our Loki Lego launcher, the first spacecraft in the Young Stuff space program. For um, the first launch, we didn't really have a goal. We just wanted to get it off the ground. We didn't it really, really went up. understand just, as much science. That we were kind of just letting go of it and hoping that the it calculations went well. were right. We call it the Loki Lego Launcher because Loki is our cat. Our flight computer keeps track of a number of things, including altitude, latitude, longitude, speed, temperature, pressure, voltage, current, and power. There is a lot of data that we can learn from. The first launch went to 78,000 feet. The images were awesome. When we first saw them, we screamed. It's just the blackness of space, and then there's Loki sitting there in the middle of it, right on the horizon. The first media that kind of wrote an article about us was a local tech news website called GeekWire. And then someone from the Washington Post saw it, and so they wrote an article about it. And then other people saw it, and they wrote articles about it. You're gonna have to bring the Loki Lego launcher. <gasps> no! No! No way! No way! Seriously? You're gonna meet the president. Our parents told us that we were going to the White House Science Fair. Well, hello, everybody. Welcome to the White House. When he actually walked through the doors, we were all in complete awe and like admiration. Hey, guys. Because this is President Obama. He was really easy to talk to. Yeah. He is really friendly. What do you guys have here? So we built a spacecraft called the Loki Lego Launcher and we sent it up to 78,000 feet. That's crazy. He talks to all of these like famous world leaders and he makes decisions that affect the fate of our country. And we're just nine and 11 year old girls who did a science project. This is a rough drawing of the flight computer. And we'll probably put the VI sensor here. I'm making some changes to our original design because we're adding some new components and taking off some. On the second launch, we added a bigger balloon because we wanted it to go higher and we also wanted it to go faster. We added an APRS radio tracker, which sent us location and altitude data in almost real time. However, the APRS might not be very accurate at ground level, so having the GPS unit as well is very helpful. 
We rewired the voltage slash current slash power sensor so it would connect to a solar panel that we installed on our spacecraft to measure how much current it was getting from the sun. And we had a hypothesis that as our spacecraft went higher, we would have more solar current because mm -hmm. we thought that since there's less particles in the air, it wouldn't block the sun's rays. The last thing that we changed was our Lego minifigure. We thought that she would be a good role model because she's a girl who's strong and she's brave and she doesn't give up even when things are hard. Soon, it was time for launch. We couldn't believe that it actually went 101,000 feet. I think we screamed again. Our current data was really interesting because our solar panel was producing more current as the altitude was going up, which indicated that our hypothesis was correct. Getting something correct, especially when you don't know that much about the subject, always feels good. <laughs> I hope that more kids, especially girls, follow paths and do projects like ours in STEM. And I hope that our projects teach them that they can do whatever they want if they put their heart into it. They don't have to stick with whatever is girly or boyish. Girls are awesome and girls can do anything. Hi, welcome to Great Big Story Questions. Please state your name and your specialist subject. I'm Stuart, I'm from London, and my specialist subject is brilliant. Let's start the clock. Instead of memorizing, which brand uses hands-on problem solving, a learning method proven to be six times more effective than watching lectures? Pa pass. The answer was brilliant. Next question. Coding with Python, predicting probability, vector graphs, and improving large language models are all lessons you can find in which interactive learning app? Oh, I don't, I don't, I pass. It's brilliant. Last question. In 2023, it was found that Americans spend on average 4.5 hours on their phones per day. Which platform builds your personal and professional growth by converting some of that time into learning? I really don't know, pass. Really? It's brilliant. That's the whole book. I give up. Brilliant is where you learn by doing, with thousands of interactive lessons in math, data analysis, programming, and AI. To try everything Brilliant has to offer for free for a full 30 days, visit brilliant.org slash greatbigstory, or click on the link in the description. You'll also get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Learn by doing with Brilliant. Now to go a little deeper into space. Exploring our cosmic origins is our motto. The really primary thing that Alma allows us to probe is the early stages of pretty much everything you can think of in the universe. It allows us to probe the birth of galaxies, the birth of stars, the birth of planets. In Chile, there's a really powerful telescope. It captures images from space in detail that has never been achieved before. I love data, and every one of the images from OMA can surprise you, can show features that really change the way people think about that area of science. ALMA is comprised of 66 individual telescopes, which are uh, all brought together to act as a single telescope to produce a single image of a, a region of the sky. What we've done is build lots of little telescopes that are 12 meter in size, and we distribute them so that they're 10 kilometers apart. And we have lots of antennas because the more that you fill in that area, the better the sensitivity of your images will be. 
We can now look back to times that are equivalent to 11 or 12 billion years ago in the history of our universe. It's very likely that Alma is going to tell us about the birth of galaxies. The Alma correlator is basically the supercomputer, so it brings in all the signals. It has the equivalent of 16 million PCs. The thing that excites me the most about Alma is the discoveries it's made in how planets are formed. The data that we get from the telescope, the raw data, the size is often in the range of several hundred gigabytes to a terabyte. But once we synthesize that information down into an image, it will be about the size of four or five megapixels, what you could do on a, a camera phone. By knowing how the solar system formed, we can have a better idea of where we came from and maybe where we're going in the uh, uh, distant future. I think it's time for a light snack. Astronauts have to deal with a lot of dangers in space. Deadly debris, harmful cosmic rays, and sometimes a corned beef sandwich. Uh, in the 1960s, at the height of the space race, space food was either compressed into utilitarian packages or pureed into a tube. <sighs> NASA did this in part to reduce the dangers free-floating crumbs could pose, like wreaking havoc on the space capsule's instruments. During the Gemini 3 mission, astronaut John Young Roger. didn't quite get the memo when he snuck a contraband corned beef sandwich into space. Ooh. Sure, the sandwich could have caused a life-threatening accident, but hey, wouldn't you want to know how a sandwich tasted in space? Here's how the event played out between Young and his co-pilot, Gus Grissom. Elapsed time of 022825, roll left, 55. Five. What is it? Corned beef sandwich. Where did it come from? I brought it with me. Let's see how it tastes. Oh, smells, doesn't it? Mm. Yep, it's breaking up. Is it? I'm gonna stick it in my pocket. It was a thought, anyway. Yep. Not a very good one. And NASA and Congress didn't think so either. Young was reprimanded for his actions, but luckily for him, the incident didn't derail his career. He later was part of the Apollo 16 mission and walked on the moon. But that time, he made sure to leave his packed lunch at home. Finally, a new way to deliver flowers to your space pen pal. えっと、私の名前はえ、アズマ誠です。え、ま、花を使った表現の活動もやってます。うん、もう本当に20年も前の話になるんだけど、ま、あの、もう本当たまたま元々ロックのロックバンドやってて、で、ま、音楽だけじ
しっかりと自分が鼻と会話してフィーリング合わせてどれを使おうかなと最終的に決めようかなと思っていますここから、えー、ラブロック砂漠に向かいますまず今回は約上空3万メートルまで花を上げたいなと思ってます。3万からそうですね、3万もう少しあの高くいけたらいいかなというふうには思っています。これはまあ約3万目あの上空3万メートルに打ち上げるということなのでまずやっぱり、えー、バルーンといって、まあ、その花を実際具体的に上げるものを作ることですねでその次のプロセスとしてはそれを記録に収めていくその映像で、えー、しっかり収めていくなんて言うんでしょうねこうテクニカルなものを詰めていくで最後、えー、僕が実際砂漠で、えーまあ、ロスの花市場で買った花を組み合わせて一つの花の作品を作っていくっていうことですかね。実際打ち上げて。ただまあ本当のお花なんです。すごくデリケートなものだから、本当に最後まで綺麗にこう宇宙空間に行って綺麗に散ってくれたかどうかっていうのはちょっとわからないですよね。だからすっごい実験的な作品なんで、実際やってみて作品を確認するまでわからないという。でもそれはなんかこう一つこう花を使った芸術のなんて言うんだろうなこうすごい面白さでもあるかなと思ってますね。こうまああの絶対にそこでは存在しえない花をこう生けることで、まあ、花の新しい美をこう紡ぐというかあぶり出していく導いていくっていうのはが目的ですね。<音楽>